Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of Science. In this episode I want to teach you and show you magnetic fields that surround a permanent magnet. In front of me here I have a permanent magnet and this red side here is the North Pole and the blue side is the South Pole. The first thing I want to do is sprinkle some iron filings around the magnet to demonstrate and show visually what the magnetic fields actually look like. So I'll begin by placing the magnet uh, underneath the paper. And just try to line it up straight. Okay, so my magnet is about there. And now I can take my iron filings and sprinkle them around the magnet. Makes a very satisfying sound. And less is more in the case of iron filings and magnetic fields. But there you can see the magnetic field that surrounds the permanent magnet which is in the middle there. You can see a lot of the iron filings are bunching up on the poles and that's where the magnetic field is strongest. As you move further away from the magnetic field, the field gets weaker. And the field is also three-dimensional. It's not just going out to the side on this two-dimensional plane, just on this piece of paper, but it's also looping out this way towards the camera and into the table and underneath the table as well. And these iron filings are stacked up on top of each other, kind of like a little tower. And that's indicating to you that there's a magnetic field that's coming up and around like this as well, which is pretty cool. We can also draw these magnetic fields in a much more accurate way. And that's something that I want to teach you today as well. So let me just take a moment here to try to very carefully clean my piece of paper. If you just bear with me for a moment. Okay. So the next thing I'd like to do is draw the field a little bit more accurately using a compass. Now, the white or colorless needle of the compass is attracted to the North Pole, and the red or color side of the compass is attracted to the South Pole. You can see, if I just try to show you, the needle moves as I move the compass around the magnetic field of the magnet. And we can use this compass to draw the field very accurately. So what you do is you take a pen and where the tip of the needle is pointing on the compass, you draw a dot. And then you shift the compass so that the dot lines up with this side of the needle and then you draw the next dot on the other side. So now I'm lining up my south side of the needle to the dot that I've just drawn and then doing another dot on the north side of the needle and I keep going Keep going and now I'm starting to loop back here. It's a little bit hard just because I'm looking at an angle. When you're drawing it, you should keep your eyes over the compass and over where you're drawing so that you don't uh, produce any parallax errors. I'll just keep going all the way around. Again, mine's probably not as accurate just because I'm looking at this um, at an angle. So I can't exactly line up my needle point with my dots. But you'll be able to do a better job than me. 
Okay, and then we're back to the magnet. So using the compass, I've produced a magnetic field that stretches out from this pole and follows all the way around to the South Pole. Now from here, I'm going to freehand draw my magnetic fields just to uh, do it a little bit faster, just to show you a little bit faster. So I might actually trace my magnet here so I can move that out of the way. Okay, and this was my north and this was my south. Now there's three rules when you're drawing magnetic fields. The first rule is that they must always flow north to south. So when you're drawing your magnetic field lines, they flow north to south, like so. Always north to south. Let me draw a couple more. So there'll be another one that comes out like this, and it goes off the paper right around and then uh, comes back like so, and there'll be another one that comes out there and then returns at this side. And then I can also go to the other side as well. You can see my freehand uh, drawing is not as good as my compass drawing. This one's more accurate than my freehand drawing. But just for the purposes of illustrating to you, it's okay. Comes out and then this returns. Like so. So the first rule um, the first rule is that it always flows north to south, the magnetic field lines. Always flows north to south. The second rule is um, the magnetic field lines must not touch. So whenever I'm drawing magnetic field lines, the lines cannot touch each other. Okay, the magnetic fields must not touch. So second rule, lines must not touch. And then there is a third rule. The third rule is that as the magnetic field gets weaker, the distance between the lines should increase. And as the magnetic field increases in strength, the distance between the lines should be smaller. So let me demonstrate that to you. The poles are where the magnetic fields are the strongest. So that's where the magnetic field lines will be the most dense. They'll be the closest to each other. Along the poles, the magnetic field lines will be the closest to each other because that's where the strongest magnetic field is. However, as you move further away from the magnet, the strength of the field decreases. And this is shown by an increased distance between the field lines. The further away you go, the greater distance it should be. So I might just complete this part of the magnet. So I can draw another field line here. And then as I move away, the spacing between each subsequent magnetic field line should be greater. So I'll write here, third rule. Um, the stronger the field, uh, the closer the lines. Okay, the stronger the magnetic field, the closer the lines are. And as you move away from the magnetic field, it gets weaker, and therefore the distance between the lines gets bigger. 
making sure that none of the lines that you draw actually touch. And then the first rule, of course, your field always flows north to south, always in a north to south position. From here, we can show a couple of more things. I might flip my, actually I've got a new piece of paper here. We can create new patterns. So what I might do now is I'll take a north and I'll take a south pole and put them underneath the paper like so, and then observe what the field lines look like in that case. So let's do that now. Put my north under, put my south under. Grab my iron filings. So there's the first permanent magnet. There's the boundary of the permanent magnet. You can see a concentration of those iron filings. Some of them are going up into um, the space above it because the field is three dimensional. And then let's sprinkle some more. There's the other magnet that's revealing itself. And now we reveal why a north and south pole is attracted to each other. You can see here the iron filings bunching together between the two magnets. The field from this north pole here is flowing into this south pole here. And the iron filings are aligning themselves to that magnetic field. The north pole of this magnet is producing a field that flows in the direction into this south pole of this magnet here. Let's try using the same poles and see what pattern that produces us. A little bit tricky when everything wants to stick to each other. Just bear with me while I return the filings to its container. Okay, so this time I'll stick a north pole with a north pole. Now on their own, they repel each other. And when you're playing with the magnets, you'll be able to feel that strange repulsive force that's there. It's so strange because you can't see anything, you can't feel anything, yet when you bring the poles together, there's this invisible force field around them in, in three dimensions. But let's see what it actually looks like with iron filings. Okay, so I'll put my paper back down over it. And then start sprinkling. You can see this time we have a very different pattern. There's now no iron filings at all in this central part in between the two magnets. I've got a north pole here and a north pole here, and you can see all the filings bunching up at the poles because that's where the field is strongest and the lines are the closest. But we've got a field that's flowing away from the north pole and looping around to the south pole. Same for this magnet. It flows away from the north pole, loops around to the south pole. This is why you feel a repulsive force when you try to bring those magnets together. The fields aren't able to flow into each other. Instead, they end up pushing against each other and away from each other. They push into each other and away from each other as they flow back to their own south pole. And that's why you feel that repulsive force when you use um, like poles, the same poles, like a north and a north, or a south and a south. 
but there are other configurations we can try as well. Again, just bear with me while I try to clean this up without making too much of a mess. Um, we can also do those magnets there. We can also have a look at a horseshoe magnet. Uh, this, I'm assuming, is my North Pole and this is my South Pole. If I follow the same color rules, um, red is generally North and blue is generally South. The field here, the North Pole is flowing into the South Pole, so it's going across the magnet and it's also flowing around the top like this. I can once again show this um, by two ways. The first way is using a compass. So if I was to use, uh, maybe I'll just put it on paper, it's probably easier to see. If I was to put this compass on top like this and then draw my lines or draw my dots, if I was to follow it, it would loop around like so and then return to the south pole and it also flows around underneath the horseshoe magnet as well. If I started here, it loops around back to the south pole and I want to show this underneath uh, the paper with the iron filings as well. And I've made a bit of a mess here. Okay. So there's that south pole. And then let's try to find the other pole. There it is. So this magnet is not as strong as the ones that I was using before. So the field lines are not quite as obvious or clean. Um, you can see the North Pole here and the South Pole here with the concentration of iron filings. And you can see that the North Pole is flowing into the South Pole here. Now, as you're making your fields with your iron filings, there's a lot of different patterns that you can try. You can try two north poles like so, and if you've got more magnets, you can try another north pole underneath your piece of paper. Sprinkle the iron, iron filings, making sure the magnets are underneath your piece of paper, not on top. You don't want the iron filings sticking to the magnets because that's a pain to clean up. And see what kind of pattern that produces. Or you can see the pattern when you've got a north-south with a north, or flip this one as well to a south. Um, you can even try four magnets. What kind of pattern would this Produce maybe like a star pattern. Oh my, now they're all sticking together. The point being is that experiment. Experiment with different configurations of poles, different configurations of your of the placement of the magnets, and see what kind of field it produces. Some of them produce really pretty um, patterns that are visually nice to look at. The final thing that I want to touch on today is the Earth's magnetic field. Just move this to the side. And bring this. Let's make sure it's centered on the camera. Okay. So the Earth is a giant magnet, a planet sized magnet with a south and a north pole. However, what's a bit counterintuitive is that at the moment on planet Earth, the North Pole, which is the North Geographic Pole, right? when we refer right here, geographic, 
When we refer to the North Pole, we mean the top of the planet. Right? We're referring to the North Pole geographically speaking. And the South Pole is geographically speaking where Antarctica is, the bottom of the planet. The strange thing is, the magnetic pole of Earth is actually the opposite. Earth has its southern magnetic pole, its south magnetic pole, at the top of the planet, at our north geographic pole. And the north magnetic pole is actually Earth's south geographic pole. But it gets a bit stranger. Every few hundred million years, the poles of planet Earth, according to the rocks that we look at when we dig them out of the ground and the history they tell us, every few hundred million years, the poles flip. And we have no idea why or how that occurs. But every few hundred million years, according to the evidence that we have, the poles flip over. And at the moment, planet Earth has its north magnetic pole at its southern geographic pole. So when your compass is getting lined up to Earth's magnetic field, the north pole of the compass, which is often a red needle, a red line, is aligning itself with Earth's magnetic field. Now the north pole on the compass is flowing towards the uh, south magnetic pole of Earth which is, again, confusingly, the North Geographic Pole. This is why on the compass, the red needle is a North Pole, and it's pointing towards our North Geographic Pole, because the North Geographic Pole is actually the South Magnetic Pole. It's a little bit confusing to wrap your head around, um, but with a little bit of practice and a little bit of study of um, a diagram, you can get there. Next time you're using a compass, notice that the compass red needle, which is the north pole of the magnet inside the compass, is aligning to Earth's magnetic field, and the north pole of the compass is aligning to Earth's magnetic field and flowing in the direction back towards Earth's southern magnetic pole, which is, at this moment, on top of planet Earth. Okay, that just about wraps up this episode of Science. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Um, hit the like button. Hit smash. I mean, smash the subscribe button. Hit like. You know the you know the drill. Um, and I shall I shall see you in the next episode of Science.